All right, so have you, with considering what's going on uh, in the world today, you know, like we, when we look at the world events, we look at things that we really care for, and oftentimes those things are taken away from us. And we, we come to a place where we're like questioning what's happening. And I, with, with that said, I, I am a firm believer in the power of faith and trust. A few years ago, I wanted to start a, a business, a business in the real, real estate industry. And uh, I, decided, I decided to call it Pro-TS Management. And these words would serve as a, as a great reminder uh, of where the business began. If you, look, if you look at carefully the word Pro-TS, it's an abbreviation from Proverbs 3, 6. The word Pro comes from Proverbs. T, 3, and S stands for 6. Because at that time, I was so fascinated with this, with this passage. This is my way of being uh, creative and also a way to bring blessings to the business through Scripture and a way to, for me to remain true, truth and uh, to be faithful and trusting in God. Uh, instead of staying away and um, and do wh whatever I wanted, but that you probably know what the outcome of that business was. Unfortunately, my plan never took shape, and as fear and despair started uh, creeping up, in, in like knowing what directions I should take, but even then. I found a little bit of comfort in knowing that I chose this name with, with good intentions. So as Christians, with many flaws, we often bring God's word to keep us in check with what we do. Why? Because we want to do the right thing, but our flesh sometimes overpowers our will. Now, I want to ask you this. Can you kind of relate to a situation where you know that, it's, that you need to do it, but you, are, you really want, you fresh, you flesh takes over. So what, what I want to bring our attention to is that we've all encountered inner battles where we know one thing is the right thing to do, but our body and mind pulled us in different directions. We might be struggling with peer pressure or wanting greatly approval, the approval of others. Plain simple things like our brain, our mind plays tricks on us. It is easy to be overwhelmed and confused without knowing which way to turn. Thankfully, I thank God especially that there are answers and solutions available to these very human issues. Even when it feels like hope is lost and we found no way out, remember that it only takes just a little bit of reassurance for us to gain our hope back. We can agree that day-to-day -day struggles are real, right? I think, I think we all can come to a conclusion that yes, day-to-day -day struggles are real. So when we, have this, when we develop these kind of questions, the good thing is that we have a source to go. And that source is in the scripture, it's the Bible. So having described what I just said, Let's go and see what the Word of God says. Uh, let, let's see what God says about trusting in, in Him in times of need. The passage that I'm going to share with you is in Proverbs. And I'm going to provide with you just a little bit of context 
of Proverbs 3, verses 1 to 10. This Proverbs was written by King Solomon. And King Solomon, with his humility, he went to God, and he asked God for wisdom, not for himself, but for God's wisdom, so that he can use the wisdom to lead God's people. But God, God answered his prayer. Not only that one particular request, but he answered it, he tripled it. He gave him not only wisdom, but he gave him wisdom, wealth, and good looking. And God also promised that there will be no one before or after that will bypass his skills, this, the wisdom, the wealth, and the, and the good looking that God gave to Solomon. And we, as we know that Solomon was faithful to God. But at the same time, he went astray by going against the will of God. He allowed his feelings to take over by going after women from nations that God disallowed. So let me uh, guide you into this passage. Um, God also, pro before we read, uh, I wanted to say that God also promised us that if we honor the Lord with our substance, we will be blessed with plenty of abundance. Before we read, let me invite you to, to pray with me. Shall we pray? Our Lord and our God, in Jesus' name, Father, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your love. Thank you for grace that you've made abundant to each and, and everyone. Thank you for many mercies, O oh God. Father God, as we hear in your house of worship, we look to you for help. We ask for the power of the Holy Spirit to come down and be in us, be among us. Give us, soften our hearts to give us light that we may understand what your word says. We thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So if you are with me, please turn to Proverbs 3, verses 1 to 10. One thing I, I also want to highlight before you uh, read is that if you look at the pattern of this passage, it comes with, uh, it, it, it has alternate patterns, like verse first gives you a command, and alternatively, second verse is a reward. So that pattern continues on, continues on throughout this whole passage. So it's also an example for, for us when we read the Bible that we can like, oh, this is what God says. And when you obey, this is what you get for your obedience. Uh, first, first one. First one is a command. And it says, my child, do not fear or do not forget my teaching. But let your heart keep my commandments. And the reward is in, chapter, is in verse 2. For length of your days and years of life and abundance of welfare will, I will give you. That's a reward. And you continue on. Another command. Do not let loyalty and faithfulness, faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablets of your heart. Reward for doing that is so that you will find favor and good rebuke in the sight of God and of people. Think about that. Uh, that reward for obeying God. Another command, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not rely on your own insights. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And the reward for doing that is he will make straight your path. And another command in verse 7 is do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. The reward for doing that is it will be a healing for your flesh and refreshment for your body. Verse 9, honor the Lord with your substance and with your first fruits of all your produce. Reward for doing that is then your barn will, barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. So let's, uh, let's uh, look at this um, passage in, in one point with three subpoints. If you look at this passage, it is a father or teacher speaking to a son. 
And what he's saying to his son is, this son is told, number one, to trust in the Lord and lean not on his own understanding. If, if you look at uh, verse 5 and 6, verse 7 and 8, to fear God. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Uh, number The third sub-point is to honor God and not fail to give him, verse 9 and 10. So let's look at verses 1 to 4 first. Verses 1 to 4, if you look at each of these commands, uh, each deal with a danger of using or misusing the gift of God. This son is encouraged not to forget, but to keep what he is taught. I want you to listen very carefully to, to, to what this teaching uh, is about. Because there is, the benefit of that is, number one is longevity, number two is prosperity. When, when we talk about prosperity, we're not talking about uh, material, material stuff. In prosperity, the, the word, in original word that is used for prosperity or is often associated with prosperity is the word shalom. Shalom is peace. So having prosperity, prosperity brings peace in, in, in that individual. And um, if you look at verse 5 and 6, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Meaning that one should not rely on his own understanding. Why? Because wisdom, only wisdom, comes from God. And wisdom has its superiority. And it cannot be replaced. So when we, when we look at this wisdom of God, we know that um, if we go back to the New Testament, John the Baptist was born... Then he, he was given wisdom. But Jesus, when Jesus was born, he already came with wisdom. That's the difference. But you and I, we were born without anything. And we were not given wisdom, but we have to go look for it. We have to attain wisdom from God. And as we're looking at this verse also, it's a good reminder for young people. That wisdom is from God. Why? Because they must remember that when they, they did not become wise in their own ways, but it is by God. And the third sub-point is to honor God. To honor God and not fail to give Him. So when we look at co the context of this, when they talk about this, uh, when this passage was written, it was written to the Israelite to how they lived. In Israel, they honor God with their first fruit. What is that first fruit? First fruit is, you know, like, unlike today, we, not many of us, do farming. I, I tried farming, but I started in December. It's a very wrong time to start farming because your, your seedlings will not survive in, in, in freezing weather. So I didn't get to understand really what the first fruit is. But based on what, what I learned is that when Israel, Israel, they harvest their crops, the first part of their harvest is, is brought over to, uh, to the, uh, whether it's the tabernacle or the temple. Why? To help feed those who serve God. So they give it to God. So why that 10% that is given? And that 90% they keep. And while they're keeping that 90%, God multiplies it. God bless it more. And they bring the first fruit um, of all their crops. And this is their way of express, expressing their gratitude of God's provision. So, maybe if you're like me, Kind of ignorant in, in sense, just because I didn't know. Trying to, all the signs say, start planting your stuff in September, October. That's your last time. But I'm like, it's okay. I'll take care of my 
I'll do my business first, and when I can get to it, when I can learn it, then I'll start planning. This is California. California is different. But as, as you know, I don't have I We continue to go to whether it's Costco or Vaughn's or Syrup Brothers to buy our fruits or vegetables because, because of my failure. But um, when, we, when we look more into this honor God, we have to ask ourselves these questions. What does this mean to you and I today? And how do we, or how can we, honor God? Is it honoring God by showing up in church? Good enough? I want you to really think this through because I, many of us already know what the answer is, but maybe some of you are like me, like I knew that Winter is coming, and I need to plan way before. But my own ignorant ways, I thought there would be an exception. Maybe because I, I serve God, God may make an exception and get everyone else, everywhere else be cold, except my little, little area to be warm, to be able to, for plants to be able to grow. These are some of the arrogant, ignorant way that we believers think. So as we heard what God says about wisdom he gave to Solomon, trusting, um, fearing, and honoring him with all our substance will bring us favor. And in good status with God and man. I mean, who wouldn't want to be, we can, true, we can do things and look good in front of people, but we have to understand that God comes first. We have to make sure that we have we are in good status with God first. And once, once we accomplish that, then in front of man, we will be in good status with man as well. But more importantly, this will doing so will bring us plenty of blessings. And abundance. Let us let's follow Lord's command and not be wise in our own eyes, but seek after his wisdom and life that is pleasing before him. We must learn to trust, fear, and honor God in all our ways. So having said this, what does this word mean? Or these words, trust, fear, and honor look, look like as, as we're talking about this. Trusting in the Lord involves relying on Him for protection and provision. It also means that believing that God will provide a way when we are in difficult situations and trusting Him to keep His promises. Fear, to fear God, to fear the Lord means to be revere. The word revere is when you respect someone with not fear only, but we fear with respect. And that's what the word reverend comes from. When you, when you fear God, you revere God, you respect him, you have fear, but you also have respect. And you reference him of, above all else. We must recognize that his holiness and power put him, we have to put him first in our lives. And honor, the last point is that to honor God is to obey all of his command. Whatever the Bible says, don't just pick and choose. Be like a salad bar Christian where you do what you feel that is good for you and the rest you forget. You know, it's easy to come and serve God. But what is more difficult is to make right with one another. There is that uh, vertical worship where, where we're doing right now. We come to God and we worship Him vertically. And there is also an horizontal worship that we have to do amongst ourselves. We have to learn to care for one another. If you look at it, that's the first and foremost commandment that... that 
The various is as Christ. He said, first and foremost is to love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And like the first, love your neighbor as, as yourself. And this also means by uh, our will and desire. You have, to, you have to build that within yourself to have to desire to serve him and show our love and dedication. And we can do this by how? We can do this by our act of worship. Act of worship by giving back to our local church like Mamusa here. I can, I, can, I can assure you that when you start giving, giving back to God what belongs to him. And he's not asking for 100%. If you don't know how much to give, start with the Old Testament gives us a, uh, uh, a mark how we, can, how we can give. Start giving with 10%. Or give what you feel that you can. So you can build up your little faith. That's how we honor God by our giving. Many of us, I, I, I was like that for a very long time. I, I like to keep, keep receiving, keep receiving, but I don't usually learn to give until I start learning the Bible. And when you start giving, you get more back. And what a, what a, what, what a good play. A good place to, to, to start giving to God is, is in a house of worship. When you, I, I know a few years back, what, uh, f- 10 years ago, a few of us, we were supporting our pastor, and there's only three or four families, but we were able to pay for all of his stuff. But at the same time, God also blessed us by, by our act of obedience. And this is how we honor God. Let us remember this, this, that we have to trust him, we have to fear him by revering in him, and also honor. Honor is our act of worship, that we have to build this desire from within. That we, can, we, we, can, we don't just do it just because Pastor Sada, Pastor Lawrence is saying it, or your friend, your parents are saying it. Do it because you have the desire within you to know that this is the will of God. So, this is the message that I, I have to, 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 to share with you. Now, this is when, when, when you and I, uh, since we, we heard the message, and I explained to you that it is from the word of God. These are commands, these are reward. Your part, what you have to do is to respond to it. Because what you know now, you're accountable for it. The beauty of God's word is that in the infinite wisdom of God, he doesn't judge us for what we do not know. However, he judges us for what we know. And now that you know these things, you know you can be more blessed when you obey. It may be hard to think about it. It's difficult. But know that the promises of God is conditional to each individual if we obey it. That's the conditionality of that. If you obey it, then you will receive the blessings. The sad thing thing is that if we continue to disobey, or if we know that it is right, but we disobey, and that's when we face the consequences. It is my prayer that this message is not to condemn anybody. I'm preaching it to me and my family that we live it out. And as brothers and sisters in the Lord, thank you, Pastor Sato. Pastor Lawrence, for you could have been the one up here, but because of your humility, you allow me to be up here. Thank you for allowing me to share that I pray that you are blessed with this message. Shall we pray? Lord God, we thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your word, Lord God. As we're here listening to your word, Father God, we pray and ask that you show us your truth, your trueness, Lord God, that, that we can, that you draw us near to you. Because in so many ways, we allow our feelings to take over what 
we know that we have to do. As Paul said, I know that I don't and I know that I do. But Lord God, we, we, we need you evermore. Thank you for your wisdom. I speak blessings upon this con congregation, Lord, that, that whatever they do, that they will be blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to congratulate Shirley, though, on this book. If you guys don't have it, it's on Amazon. <laughs> Praise God, huh? Yeah. Shirley is my first uh, known published author that, that I know of. So I'm really, I, I got it. It's a one-time read for some of us. Some of us might take a week, but it's a, good, it's a good read. I take it. It's the four steps from helping others to come to know the Lord and to maintain that. Yeah, oftentimes we go out and we share the... Oftentimes we go out and we share the Lord to others and then we, we tend to leave to leave them. But this one gives you a better understanding and it's so easy. The steps are so easy to just go through the book and read it. And if you have any questions, she's there and we can help you guys out with the book. But it's on Amazon. Yeah, so we go get it. I know the money that he's going to get from that is going to help him with his ministry as well. All right.